Hello friends, very welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Shambhu and in this channel I talk about technology. And if that interests you, then you should definitely consider subscribing. In this video, I'll talk about one of the biggest revolution of 20th century, the mobile phone. I'll walk through the details of how exactly our mobile phones gets connected to the network and help us communicate with the rest of the world. To make the video to the point, I have addressed the topic with the help of questions. You may find some of the questions that I have answered here coming in your mind all the time. So without further ado, let's get started. The overall 4G network is divided into three parts. U-TRAN or radio network, EPC or evolved packet core, and then the internet. From the time you turn on your mobile phone till the time data connection starts, the whole communication happens in two phases. The first phase is the control session built up where the mobile subscriber's identity, security parameters, user profile, etc. are checked and validated. The second phase is data connection built up where the mobile device is granted access to the internet or the call network. We have many different components involved in this architecture and we'll see a brief intro of each of these components in the coming sections of the video. Question number one, how my mobile phone connects to the network? What is the basic mechanism that mobile phone and the operator follow to connect the network and what are the components involved in that? You might have heard about electromagnetic wave spectrum. The whole spectrum is divided into ionizing and non-ionizing waves. Ionizing waves are UV lights, X-ray, gamma ray, etc. And you should always avoid exposure to these waves. The non-ionizing band is chosen for the communications because it is known as harmless. You can send or receive these signals over the air without harming yourself or any other ecosystem. Well, the latest researchers claim this point. Your mobile operator picks one frequency in this non-ionizing band and use that between the mobile phone and the mobile tower for the communication. This is how a typical mobile tower looks like. So now let's see how exactly the communication happens. Our mobile phones have antenna, which is also a transducer device used to generate as well as send audio signals. The frequency over which the mobile tower and the phone communicates is very high and can go in gigahertz range. We don't have devices that can do this high rate of analog to digital processing. So our mobile phones have to convert these signals to moderate frequency signals, also called as baseband signals. And at the end, these signals get converted into digital signals for the applications to process the data. This brings us to the bonus question that how to check which frequency my phone is connected to. I have the iPhone with me and I'll show you how to check that my iPhone is connected to what frequency right now. For this you will have to get into the engineering mode or test mode also some people call it. You will have to type the number star 3001 hash 12345 hash star and press the call button. This will take you to the test mode screen and you will find LTE there. Under LTE you tap on serving cell info and it will take you to the new screen where you can find DL underscore frequency. This we are going to use in order to find what frequency exactly we are connected to. For this, you will have to go to cellmapper.net. There can be various sites. Uh, here you will have to select 4G LTE because we are uh, connected with 4G right now and the downlink uh, uh, frequency that we got from the mobile, which was 1299 in my case and also the region uh, which I am residing right now. Click on calculate. It will tell you the frequency and few other things about your network. For example, it is LTE frequency and my frequency is 1719 in the uplink and 1814 in the downlink. Also, it tells you the possible bandwidth which I might be getting and it also has the band number which I am connected to. Let's move to the question number two. How my mobile phone picks the right operator? So suppose there are two persons sitting in the room and in that particular room, definitely there would be multiple operators advertising or broadcasting their frequencies. So you have different frequencies available in that particular room. And now suppose orange person has an orange mobile and it will only connect to the orange operator. 
and the blue person has a blue mobile and it wants to connect to the blue operator so how does that particular mobile phone would come to know that which particular frequency i need to choose i'll have to have some particular parameter in order to distinguish between these different frequencies that which one is mine and which one is different the mobile phone when it starts up it checks for the three basic parameters first parameter is is the strength of the signal is appropriate to connect for example if uh, there are a b c d there are four signals available it will check for the signal which has the proper strength to connect to the network if the strength is not proper then definitely it would discard that particular signal the second parameter is if the available frequency in that room is under the permitted network in the sim card so sim card has this this very basic access list there is a file in sitting in the sim card which tells the sim card that which are the network i am allowed to connect the third important parameter is the services the device will also check if the network is providing services which the mobile phone is asking for if all these conditions satisfy then the mobile phone starts the control connection with the mobile tower which is advertising that particular frequency now coming to the next question how does the provider identify my mobile phone there must be many mobile phones in the network so how does the provider actually identifies a mobile phone let's answer that the sim card has a very minimal but very important information stored in it some of that information is integrated circuit card identifier or icc id international mobile subscriber identity or mz uh, authentication keys location area identity sms and contact related details when any mobile phone starts up it sends its mz or international mobile subscriber identity to the network operator this value has three different component mcc or mobile country code mnc or mobile network code and mns mobile subscription identification number now the mobile operator has the device called hss or home subscriber server that store all mzs and associated user data and every incoming connect request will be validated against the database in the hss if the subscriber's mz is found in the hss then the further connection process starts every mz has a user profile associated with it and it is stored under hss for example user 1 may have subscribed for voice and data uh, services user 2 might have subscribed for voice data and international roaming services etc so that is how one mobile phone is recognized in a provider network and the most important role to identify one particular subscriber in the mobile operator network is played by icc id and the mz let's move to the next question how does the isp track and bill me for my activities using phone so as i explained in my previous slide when the mobile phone starts it starts to build the control session once the control session is built up the data connection starts where the mobile tower which is also called e node b in 4g network directly connects with the s gateway or serving gateway which in turn connect with the packet gateway or sometimes also called pdn gateway this particular device has a direct connection with the outside world or the internet so all your data will pass through this particular device now the flow based charging is done with the help of pcrf or policy and charging rule function pcrf has an agent running on the p gateway which is called pcef or policy and charging enforcement function PCEF is responsible for flow based charging for example for a sim you sometime when cross the allowed limit you will be charged more that is called flow based charging PCRF helps to program PCEF on the PDN gateway to treat different traffic coming from the mobile in accordance with the subscription that you have bought now here you can guess if the government asks the service provider to tap or intercept somebody's connection for lawful intercept then where it will do it since the p gateway has the complete visibility of the data hence this is 
द प्लेस वेयर द लॉफुल इंटरसेप्ट इज डन नाउ लेट्स टॉक अबाउट रोमिंग हाउ डज रोमिंग बेसिकली वर्क इन फोर जी देर आर वेरियस मैथड्स डिफाइंड फॉर रोमिंग डिफरेंट नेटवर्क डो इट डिफरेंटली एज दे नीड टू नेगोशिएट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद द वेरियस ऑपरेटर्स सर्विंग डिफरेंट जोग्राफी वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस टू इम्पॉर्टेंट वंस हेयर द फर्स्ट वन इज होम राउटेड रोमिंग एंड द सेकेंड वन इज लोकल ब्रेकआउट what happens in home routed roaming let's consider this case where a person from australia visits somewhere in asia when he or she tries to make a call the control session requests are forwarded by the visited network to the home network in the home network we have hss sitting and the hss which is holding the complete database for all the subscriber and the subscriptions that they have bought validates the user and informs the visited network that if this particular user is allowed for network access or not once the control session is established the data connections are also forwarded to the home p gateway or packet gateway by the visited serving gateway this is called home routed roaming you may experience delays or latency in this approach but all depend on the distance and also the quality and volume of the channel between the providers now let's see what is local breakout in this roaming method the home network is only used for control session where the identities and the subscription for the particular user is identified and validated once that is done the data session is served by the visited network p gateway itself with this i'll close the video i hope the video was useful for you please consider subscribing to the channel if you have not already thank you so much for your time have a nice day ahead and happy learning